Hello, you're listening to Abstract AF and Anthony Hadjaswal. In this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the British novel The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. It won the Man Booker Prize in 2011 and has also been made into a movie. While the story is quite simple, there is this diary at the center of the plot and it has something about relationships being looked at from a mathematical sense. And that part can leave some readers confused. So let's first talk about the plot before we explain the cryptic diary entry. The sense of an ending is told from the point of view of Tony Webster, a retired man who recalls how he met a brilliant boy called Adrian Finn at school. Then in my school days, I met my best friend, Tony Webster. I'm Adrian Finn. While the intellectually superior Finn goes to Cambridge on a scholarship, Tony doesn't get to study in an Ivy League college. However, he gets a girlfriend called Veronica, and the two of them don't exactly have the warmest of relationships. Or at least, Tony doesn't have many pleasant memories of the two of them. He remembers staying with Veronica's family for a few days, but was made to feel like he wasn't welcome. In fact, Tony goes on to claim that Veronica's mother tells him that he should not be putting up with Veronica's crap. After almost two years of dating, when Veronica asks him where the relationship is going, Tony doesn't have a concrete answer. This pretty much leads to their breakup. After a few months, he receives a letter from Adrian Finn informing that he is now dating Veronica. Tony writes back saying he's okay with their relationship, but cuts off all communication with the two of them. However, a few months later, Adrian kills himself. In his suicide letter, Adrian leaves a philosophical note about how he did not choose to be born, which is why he chose to take control of his life and end it. His friends are shocked, but they admire his philosophical courage. For the next 40 years, Tony goes on to live a normal life, gets married, has a kid, gets a divorce, and remains on amicable terms with his ex-wife. Things shake up a little for him when he gets a lawyer's letter informing him that Veronica's mother has passed away and has left him some money and documents. The document turns out to be Adrian Finn's diary. Dear Tony, I think it right that you should have the attached and perhaps you'll find it an interesting, if painful, memento of long ago. Mrs. Ford's will describes the item as a diary. A curious Tony tries to get his hands on it, but turns out that Veronica is in possession of the diary and refuses to part with it. Tony reconnects with her after four decades and tries to persuade her to give him the diary. Eventually, Veronica only posts him a copy of a few pages from the diary, where Adrian is all philosophical, trying to equate his relationships with a mathematical formula. It's only here that the story gets intriguing and mysterious. The page ends with Adrian wondering how one might express an accumulation containing the integers b, a1, a2, s, and v. Then he writes b is equal to s minus v plus or multiplied by a1, or a2 plus V plus A1 into S is equal to B question mark. The entry ends with the words, so for instance, if Tony, that's it. We don't know what the rest of it says. It's a complete cliffhanger for both Tony and the readers. Although Tony tries to make sense of it and makes it clear to the readers that A1 is probably Adrian and A2 is Tony, which is short for Anthony. We don't know what the rest stands for, although we can assume V stands for Veronica. To understand what Adrian really meant in that page, we need to continue with the story. Now, after reading that diary entry, he obviously really wants to get the rest of the pages. He pesters Veronica to tell him what was in it. Veronica warns him that he should not be so interested in reading someone else's personal diary, but sends him an old letter. It turns out to be in his handwriting. In fact, it's a letter he had written to Adrian after the short one where he had said he was okay with Adrian and Veronica dating. However, in this letter, he's completely mean and bitter about them. He tells Adrian that Veronica is a manipulative bitch who will make his life miserable, adding that he could confirm this with her mother. He also then addresses the letter to Veronica, saying the two of them will not last long unless she gets pregnant before Adrian can find out just how boring she is. 
Now, the present Tony is shocked by this horrible letter because he conveniently forgets all about it, misleading the readers into thinking he was nice about the breakup. He decides to make amends with Veronica. Veronica takes him to a pub where she meets a group of men who seem to have learning disabilities. Tony doesn't understand what's happening and Veronica leaves without any explanation. Who's to blame for this event? Something is certainly going on. What is it? What was going on? So Tony starts hanging out at the pub, making efforts to find out more about the group. As luck would have it, he spots the men again and realizes that one of them looks exactly like Adrian. He then comes to the conclusion that Adrian must have gotten Veronica pregnant before he died. In the context of his last letter to his friend, he realizes just how terrible what he said was. So he writes an email apologizing to Veronica and she simply admonishes him for not understanding anything. Tony, on his part, continues to go to the pub, and the next time he comes across that same group of men, he speaks to the guy in charge, seeking information on the man who looks like Adrian. To his shock, he learns that Veronica is not the man's mother, but his sister. So Adrian actually ended up having an affair with her mother, got her pregnant, and killed himself due to shame and guilt, and to avoid having to deal with the consequences. Turns out he was just a coward, and no philosophical hero his friends made him out to be. And here's how finally the diary entry makes sense. A1 is Adrian, A2 is Tony, V is Veronica, S is Sarah, her mother, and B is the baby. Adrian was wondering, so for instance, if Tony had the courage to make a commitment to Veronica and had the two continued dating, Adrian wouldn't have started anything with Veronica, which would mean he would never meet her mother and there would have been no baby. The reader is made to understand that Tony really did love Veronica, but just wasn't brave enough to make a commitment, leading to their breakup. It's almost as if he was somehow directly responsible for Adrian Finn's death, his best friend. And that's how we make the sense of an ending. That's all for this episode. Talk to you in the next one.